Hey guys, Andrew Shrout. I'm here on the sideboard with Matt Costa. How's it going, Matt? Good, how's it going? Thank you. Uh, you have shown up with an interesting choice, kind of a, a metagame decision for this Invitational. Uh, you are playing Mono Black Aggro yep. in Standard. So tell me a little about what made you decide to play that deck. Okay, well, I've been playing a lot of the mid-range black decks, some Black White, some Black Devotion, uh -huh. and it's pretty clear that Thoughtseize and Mutavault are the best two cards in the format, mm -hmm. but I thought that you could take even better advantage of them in an aggressive shell. Okay, so wanted to play the best cards, but also wanted to be proactive. I yeah, exactly. Okay, fair enough. So th this is uh, this is a deck that people have been. This is not a new deck, exactly. No, like, people have been tinkering with mono black aggro, uh, essentially for the entire length of the standard, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have chosen a build with, of course, you have the four. Uh, there's the twelve package of one drops. Yep. Uh, four Rakdos Cackler, four Tormund Hero, four Naro Scarhide. Uh, one of the things that I think really sets your list apart, you've got the full package of 12 Bestow Creatures. Uh, four Gnarled Scarhide again, four Spiteful Return, four Herald of Torment. Yep. Uh, so talk to me a little about those cards. Uh, well, first off, the Bestows give you uh, a bit of late game staying power. Um, they're not exactly two for ones, to mm -hmm. say, but they, they make your early game creatures more viable threats in the late game, which sort of lets you get back okay. uh, the disadvantages that you might get from your creatures being outclassed. Okay. Um, and in addition, they really help you punch through blockers like Sylvan Caridid, Corsair of Crufix, okay. um, even Grey Merchant, things that people are, are all commonly playing in this format. All right. So basically, a, about half of your creatures are uh, kind of functioning as giant growths and kind of have a weird, like, backward form of haste as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It allows you to keep on the pressure, but also have late game staying power. Okay. Now, um, one of the points of contention, I think, the, for the way that people build this deck uh, is the three drop. Yeah, there's uh, there so are, many good ones. Yeah, a lot of options. Uh, you've got some some imprecise numbers. You know, you, you aren't just jamming a bunch of four ofs nope. with the three drops. So uh, that leads me to believe that you've put some thought into this. Yeah. Uh, you're playing the four Herald of Torment, three Mogus's Marauder, and two Lifebane Zombie. So t tell me a little about what went into that decision. Uh, well, I mean, Herald of Torment is just the sure. best one. Okay. Uh, right. It's excellent. It's great on turn three. It's great on turn seven. Right. Uh, it's, you know, huge body for its cost, and bestowing it is amazing. Okay. Um, Mogus Marauder is an interesting card because it's pretty bad against both Black Devotion and Sphinx's Revelation, which are two of the pillars of the format. Right. Okay. But it's excellent against the other two biggest decks, which are Jun Monsters and Mono Blue. Okay. Um, and in particular, Marauder is a card that's great in game one, but gets worse after sideboard. So okay. I didn't want to have four in my deck and have to sideboard them out all the time because okay. you really don't want them in right. for game two so, and three. So three is just kind of the right the right balance. There. Yeah. And then two life bane zombie, you actually have the other two in the sideboard. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, this is a card that obviously is insane in some matchups and kind of bad in others. Yeah, I mean, it's just on a from a power level perspective, it's one of the best cards in the deck. Right. But unlike the the other black decks it doesn't a hundred percent fit in synergistically sure. so we don't want it in every nacho okay fair enough uh and then the, the other spot on this deck list where you've uh you've, you've got some diversity kind of some some tweak numbers is with the removal package yeah uh the, the, i said the spell the removal package instead of the spell package you of course have four thought seas you probably play like seven of that card if you could uh, absolutely yeah uh but when it comes to removal you've you've got a little more precision here you've got two bio blight two ultimate price, and a one of Hero's Downfall. Yeah. So what went into that decision? Uh, well, I really hate Hero's Downfall. Oh, okay. So a lot of the, a lot of the decks, even, even the, the controlling black decks, but also the aggressive ones play a lot of Hero's Downfalls, and three mana is just so much. A lot of the times in this deck, you're forced to kill something right. that is at on curve or less expensive than Hero's okay. Downfall. But at the same time, I, we couldn't just play all ultimate prices because you have to respect sure. Night Vale Spectre, you have to respect Pack Rat. Okay. So that's where the Bile Blights come in. Okay, so basically you, you would prefer that all your removal spells cost two, yeah. just so that you can trade two mana for two mana more often. Exactly. But Hero's Downfall, the one card that can actually just kill anything. Yeah. So you gotta have you got to make some concessions there, I, I, I kind of wanted to make a statement and just play four ultimate price, but <laughs> it, I, I couldn't bring myself to do right. it. Yeah. Could not. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, between Bile Blight, Ultimate Price, of course, you have three Doom Blade in the sideboard. Yeah. There are plenty of good removal spells at two, but they all have kind of blind spots. Exactly. Place, except for Hero's Downfall. That makes sense. All right. So you chose to play Mono Black Aggro uh, for this metagame specifically. So what are you hoping to play against here? Uh, I would love to play against Black Devotion every round. If, if right. that weren't an option, uh, I would like to play against Blue Devotion. Sphinx's Revelation, and then Jun Monsters in that order. Okay. I think the top four decks are all actually good matchups, sure. but we can't beat much of anything else. <laughs> okay, fair enough. 
So yeah, Black Devotion you think is an, like absurdly good then? Yeah. I suppose? And then Mono Blue Devotion and a Sphinx's Revelation deck. Those are those are those, those are, are those are favorable. Say. And then John Monsters is is close. Okay, fair. All right, and then what do you you, you want to not play against then? Red any, anything else? Red aggro, green white aggro, you know, mono green Pelucranos, okay. Nylea's disciple, what right. have you. Fair enough. Okay, so you're kind of banking on the invitational field then to bring their bring their tier one game. Exactly, and that's something that in my mind has been true at all the invitationals I've that, played. Yeah, so that, I felt I'm, comfortable. I think that's a, a pretty solid prediction. Yeah. So yeah, that, that seems like a good call. Uh, I want to talk about the sideboard really quickly. There are several side cards, sideboard cards that I think are. are Kind of obvious at this point, you know, Doomblade, Duress. People know what those cards are for. There are a couple of interesting ones. You have two Night Howlers in your sideboard. Yeah, Night Howler is so good. It's it's okay. just amazing against uh, all the removal heavy black decks. Yeah. Um, it you know you play it on turn eight or nine. It makes whatever guy you're bestowing it on a viable threat. Yeah. And then when it dies, you have just as big a threat after. Okay. Um, and so any matchup where they're killing all your guys, it's getting really grindy. Night Howler is great. The same goes. For the Sphinx's Revelation matchups, okay. you know their detention spheres are taxed, right. um, okay. and it's uh, it's amazing against Wrath. So, so it's like a like a turbo bestow creature against uh, Supreme Verdicts, Mizzium Orders. Yeah. Like that. Okay. And then you, you have two Deathrite Shaman as sure. well. Sure. That's a card that is not. I'm not. When I looked at your list for the first time, I was like, okay, I don't don't really follow. What's that doing there? Yeah, it's certainly not Graveyard Hate. We no. can't even okay. make green mana. Yes. Um, it's basically when you want extra one drops. And actually, okay. that, that piece of tech comes from Jason Ellis, who top aided the open with the deck sure. last yeah, week. Okay. Um, he's a friend of mine from New England. And basically, uh, when you want the extra one drops uh, in the matchups where you're playing is to be solely aggressive, uh -huh. like Black Devotion, like Sphinx's Revelation, yeah. you bring those in, you can even cut a land. Okay. Um, and they, uh, they just really add to the early game pressure. Sure, it's just going to let you gear down when you need to. Yeah. All right, well, that makes sense. OK, well, thanks for sitting down with me, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be rooting for you. Thank you. Stick around. We've got plenty more coverage coming of the Invitational here in Columbus.